Join us, MrTruck.com, for truck reviews, trade reviews, and accessory reviews. Welcome, folks. <laughs> Wait for the cow. There the camera is. Welcome to another exciting Zoom video. And I've got Dan, Mr. Big Truck. Dan, you got matching hats on, Dan. Show your hat. We're twinsies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you don't have the baby with you last I watched the last video you did about those GM truck transmissions. You had a baby in your arms. And who was that? Well, see, now, this is what they do at the big three nowadays. What they do is they give you a little truck, and then you, you, you know, go ahead and you grow it, and then it turns into a Ranger, and then it grows up and eventually becomes an HD. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so your baby, he's a boy, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, Thomas <laughs> Allen, he was born on Tuesday, August 11th. Awesome. And uh, I was, he, he didn't want to lay down last night, uh, so... I had him with me, and he found up going to sleep. So instead of moving him, I just shot the video. Boy, he slept through the whole thing. It looked like. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of the point, though, you know. Well, that's good. Well, this video is one of those educational videos, and I think you're going to enjoy it because we're going to talk about transmission grade shifting and what's new out there and what's going on. We're going to be showing a video that Dan took at the, the work truck show. And uh, we'll, we'll get into some of the new Allison transmissions coming out and uh, a few things that are happening. Because a lot of the, the, the controversy we're having on transmissions right now is, you know, the heavy-duty Rams, the high output, are using Ison transmission, which is owned 50% by Toyota. It's in a lot of heavy-duty trucks, the Hinos and all that. And they've been really well with it. I, I've, I've been tickled with it. I know it's way better than what the regular Ram transmission has been. But now the rumor, the rumor is that they're looking at ZF out of Germany, and they're looking at the Allison. And I, you know, I, I really think they got a good transmission without the ice, and they should stay there. But that's my opinion. Maybe they can get it cheaper from these other guys. I don't know, but I know they've already got some ZF transmissions in their other trucks. The new eight-speed with that uh, six-four Hemi, and I, I'm just taking it up the Ike with with uh, on the TFL Truck Channel with. Andre, and then all their other little trucks, little trucks, their half tons, their 1500s, they've got the ZF transmission and their eight speeds there with the Eco Diesel and the Hemi. So, and those I've really been impressed with. I'm not so impressed with one on the heavy duty, uh, but we'll talk about that. But yeah, um, and you'll see it now. Watch for these little scenes and videos. I, I, you've actually got concrete evidence of some of this. And, and John Scott, one of the Austin's rep in there, was talking about behind this one DD5 Detroit diesel, it's only a four-cylinder. I guess it's like a DD13, maybe a 16 or whatever with two cylinders chopped off. And uh, they'll talk about horsepower and torque there. But that one, you know, what they're doing with that, and it's a nine-speed automatic Allison. And they're looking at, uh, you know, who knows what they're looking at. There may be something in that, that Ram is looking at. So I thought it was an interesting uh, video that Dan did there. So see that after we get them talking about Ram. And we'll show that video, and then at the end, we'll talk about the GM and the Ford transmission in detail. About grade shifting. It's about grade shifting and what we've learned about these guys. But, yeah, and, you know, I was so happy to see the 10 speeds come out. And that the biggest advantage that I've seen in the 10 speed is that they will go faster up the hill, which is a good thing. You know, and I was worried about how they would go downhill with grade shifting because more gears means less RPM less engine braking on a gas engine, and you know less back pressure and all things you want to keep the RPMs up. So they've got to correct that with calibration. And I'll tell you what Ford did to correct that on certain engines. We'll go about that at the end of this video coming up. But another thing to watch out for is in this, uh, talking about Ram transmissions now, they use ZF in, like I talked about, all these eight speeds that they have, but it's not, from Germany, ZF didn't ship it over here. It's licensed from ZF. So it's actually manufactured in the Chrysler plant. Does that remind you of something? Like maybe Allison and their Allison branded ones in the GM trucks. But they'll talk mm -hmm. about in this video too that the 4500, the commercial truck, 
still has that 1000 Allison that's made by GM brand or you know it's it's a branded Allison but they're 30 they're 40 they're 50 <laughs> that was a 4500 they're 5500 and 6500 are true Allison automatics that's interesting I didn't know that you'll see that in this video too so keep an eye open for that but you know that's the whole problem is this, this grade shifting which is upsetting me about all these transmissions not all of them do it well some of them you have to hit just the right sweet spot to make it work right and uh you know it's it, it's in science and you know i've talked before about this a lot and you know all these things all it really takes is a different calibration and i've seen them do that on the forge when we were testing them so they fix it on certain ones and i'll go over that at the after the other video with these these guys out in uh, where was that in indiana the the work truck show yes that work truck show was in uh, indianapolis indiana uh believe it or not all the way back, I want to say in March. It's been so long ago. This year's been so yeah. crazy. It feels like 20 years ago by now. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was, it was before the world going totally crazy like it has now. So that's another question I want you folks to try to answer for me. Put your comments in there and, and tell me, should RAM stay with Ison? Should they switch to ZF from Germany? Well, the German licensed one, or should they go with Allison? Allison's probably got the best transmission of any transmission ever built. It's probably one of the oldest automatics. You know, Cat had built one, then they stopped doing licensed vehicles. But uh, yeah, so tell me which one you think they should go with. I'm voting for the Ison, but that's just my opinion. But, uh, you know, it would, it, that's going to be quite a thing if they do change that because, you know, the, it's been a big improvement over the Ram, the six speeds and all that. And that's what the, the, Alice, the Ison is too, is a six speed. So I, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure that Allison can come up with a six, uh, that uh, Ison can come up with a 10 speed too. I don't know why not. So that's another thing is, you know, why, why don't they finally jump from a six to a 10? Because, you know, like I'm saying, going downhill, it makes a difference. Uphill, maybe not. I mean, that six speeds done really well for the high output Cummins, but we'll find out. But, you know, the, the new Allison looks like it did like four brake applications on that the I gauntlet, but the Ram Eco Diesel with a ZF 8 speed made by Chrysler, licensed by ZF, it had four brake applications going down the I gauntlet. You all know what the I gauntlet is. Me and Andre do that all the time with big heavy trucks and trailers. You know, it's 11,000 feet in the air, it's a 7% grade up. But, so, up and down is a great big test on trucks. And you usually do that in snowstorms and everything else. But that, the, uh, the Eco Diesel with that ZF did it in four. And then let's see the um, the Hemi 1500. It did it in five brake applications, which is very good. Now going just just talking about grade shifting, the heavy duty Ram with the Ison. That one uh, actually because the the uh, the adaptive cruise control works so well, and that had zero brake applications. And I've seen Ford do that, and I've seen Allison do that in GM a long time ago. But uh, that one actually, we got to clear down and pull over 30,000 pounds, the zero, which means that adaptive cruise control, controlled the brakes and downshifted like it wanted to. And that was a six speed ISIN. Now, with the, the problem one was that new, um, the new six, the, the six four Hemi just came out with that ZF8 speed for 2000, I think it came out in 19. We finally got tested this year. And that thing had a world record. It was 14 brake applications coming down that 7% grade. I mean, I, before, like the highest one ever on any truck was 11. They checked clear up to 14. And I think with a 14 rear, it would have done better. It had a three, I think it was a 373. That one didn't quite do it. And that's, you know, 14 brake applications. We were pulling 14,300. That's using your brakes a lot because the transmission's not working well enough. So I don't know if that was a kind of calibration problem there, but so that kind of kind of made me think the ZF may not be the way to go, even though it works on the other eight speeds that they have in their half tons. But that's just my opinion. Uh, so I guess unless you have something you want to talk about, Dan, I was going to go. We'll switch now to that video of, of you in the back seat of the semi driving, and you can you can tell set us up. Tell us what you were in. Was that a tractor trailer rig? I couldn't quite tell. Well, that uh, well, believe it or not, I do have a couple of uh, things to say about the uh, about the transmissions and all that leading up there. But to answer your question, that was a Freightliner M2, and and you and Andre have got plenty of experience in a Freightliner M2, 
as including the crew cab one because you guys had that uh, sell it hauler i believe yeah uh, you did a couple of tests on that and now it didn't have a fold down mattress in the bed but it was very very comfortable very roomy and that was a crew cab box truck with that uh it was that four cylinder dd5 with a nine speed allison automatic in it yeah yeah and that then they look like real long trucks i was noticing turn the corners he didn't have to swing wider either so I figured oh, it was no. a full rig, yeah. Com compared to what I, I had actually driven my truck to that event. So in comparison, it was like, all right, it's like driving a pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, too, um, that, that freight line is one of my favorite trucks. I love the ones that transvest, yeah. Well, and the, the funny thing is now we're talking about, you talk about the, I call it the ASIN. So ASIN, uh, transmission, the six speed. And you say it's part Toyota. Well, that makes very, very good sense because Toyota, they say, was the same thing, even well beyond the point when it's time to do something else. And then finally, when enough people have complained about something, the, uh, the Android Auto being the case in point here, then they finally go ahead and allow that to happen. Uh, so if they go and do something like an 8, 9, or 10 speed, who knows, maybe they'll surpass the 10 and go into something like 12 but something tells me they're not going to do that until they have got it working perfectly uh the zf i haven't had much experience with them but from what i could see watching and uh the, what you had had to say about it it's kind of the it, it kind of goes back to the what chrysler used to have with uh with their old uh, torque flight transmission, what, what they used to have. And I've got a 94 model with a four-speed automatic, and it works. It does the job for a while, but there are clearly better options out there. So, yeah. And the Ford, it does very well, and it's very happy while working. Yeah, yeah, they think that old torque flight was like, what, a 327? It had some weird numbers on it that sounded really cool. But that's, you know, that's one thing that Ram has had problems with for, you know, decades was their automatic transmission. So, I, I my opinion, Ison saved their bacon on those heavy duties. I mean, that's when they, where they had all the problems on their normal six-speed made by Chrysler. And they have improved it. I've driven it a lot lately. And that's been a bit, so that's what they've done. They've evolved and improved dramatically. But the Ison kind of turned over some of those problems they've had with transmission reputation that I'm so tickled to see. That's why I don't really want them to switch. I want them to, to hang on to the ground that they've gained and not go experimenting, but that's just my opinion. Maybe they're getting a great deal with ZF. Well, if, if you think about it and, and you go with it, what if the they go to that better transmission, the newer transmission, but instead of making the ZF be the light duty transmission, what if they kept that solid six speed as the option? versus just completely getting rid of it. Well, that, yeah, that, well, that's, that's, then they lose scale. See, that's why it's hard for them to use several manufacturers because you're going to make 100,000 of this or you're going to make 50,000 of this and 50,000 of that or whatever. They, you're always trying to get, you know, volume to make the, the price go down. And I think that they, they would have a hard time on that. I mean, everything's done by volume. Look at the manual. We have the, the lightest powered, Cummins diesel with a manual transmission for a long time. Ram was the last one to go away with that. And that's what it was. It was volume. They couldn't sell enough of those manuals. I mean, that's what happened to Chevy Canyon, Colorado, and, and a lot of companies. Uh, they've, they've gotten rid of their manual. I think even uh, the new Frontier is going to be all automatic because they just, as much as everybody says they love them, they don't buy them as much. So, you know, that's that's another controversy. But, you know, with with, crew, with what they do with torque converters and lock-up torque converters, I mean, they'll, they'll work similar to an auto. I can make them work like an automatic. And that's like some of these runs we do up and down the Iker when I'm running to wherever I'm going in the mountains. In my videos, I, a lot of times I will show the manual shifting of it because not everybody's going to just let that thing scream down the road like we do to test it out. They're going to want more control using the manual shifting on downhill. But anyway, that's another story. So watch this video and take notes and see what you learn. Now, the first part is the uh, rep from Allison, and he's talking about this new nine speed. And the gentleman with him to drive me, he's in the second part of the video, and he's giving, he, uh, I, was he a mechanic or what was his position, the second guy? Well, the second guy, um, he was a friend of someone who was attending the, the show, and I, I forget 
uh, what part of the industry that they were in. I, I, I genuinely do. I've got his number. I've, it's in my bag somewhere. I've got to go and find it. It's, it's on my list. It, you know, kind of a, remind me every six months to do it type of thing there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you talk about school buses a lot. So I'm thinking he's in the school bus mechanic or something. I don't Yeah, know. You know what? That, that could have been it. Um, and basically this gentleman has had several buses and they've had Allison automatics in them. They've had ZS. And now these are not school buses. These are more oh, uh, like RVs, yeah. like coaches, yeah. uh, like, yeah. like the Prevost and stuff like that. Yeah. And you figure someone like that, they're going to spend like 400, like half, oh, like half a million on the low end from what I, my understanding right. is. Right. So they're going to spend all of that kind of money on that and they expect it to work because at least I know I would. If I spent a half a million something, that, that sucker better work. And <laughs> he, I mean, the gentleman went through, he, he really outlined in detail, really, uh, the the issues that he happened to have with the ZF transmissions and those and what he had, the experiences he had with the Allisons. Uh, he definitely had a clear opinion of which he thought was better because uh, the whole thing in the video was, it was a question. All right, you got the ears of Ram right here, right now. Here are the two transmissions that they're talking about in the rumor mill. Which one should you pick, should they pick? And why? That was the whole thing behind the video. Yeah, yeah. And then the bean counters get involved and comes down to price and all that. But we got some flies visiting us here in the bunker. But anyway, yeah. So uh, make sure you stay tuned and watch what these guys are talking about driving the trucks. And Dan's with them. And then we'll go in and finish the discussion about what you think about grade shifting with Ford and with GM trucks. Because I have a lot to say about that. I always have an opinion, you know. But anyway, so watch this video. Forward, backward type setup. With the cable. With the cable. Uh, this is shift by wire and uh, this one has air brakes, but the other one has a shift by wire or park by wire capability. The nine speed does. So then, is this a nine speed? This is a nine speed. Okay. okay. so. If you go cable, you only get the four selections on the cable for the what gears you want it in. I think so, but you well, but you would have all nine ranges to use. So if you're talking about a school bus, yeah, yeah you'd have all nine ranges to use. It would just be a PRND three two one type setup. Would you have a manual selector if you moved over at all? I'm not sure if we have that set up for the nine speed, but I imagine if we have it, if we have it set up for the six speed today. I don't know why we wouldn't for the nine, but I've not heard. I've not heard yes or no on that. Okay. So, so this one, if, if, if I go in first gear, I can shift this thing more or less manually through the gears. Yeah. And come down all. I can go up nine gears, come down nine gears. Yes. Never miss any gear. Yes. Or if you just hit D, then it'll just drive. But what this has is. Um, Dynactive as standard. That's a part of the FuelSense 2.0 package. It's algorithm-based shift scheduling. What that means is that right now it's in a it's in an efficiency mode because that's how the truck has been driven as of late. It'll learn how you drive. It's going to start you off in second gear, and if you continue to have a light foot throughout the day as you're driving it along, it'll skip shift gears as you get up to cruise, but it'll more or less start in second gear. Similar to the B500. I B500 believe so. Yeah. Will learn your Better. Okay, yeah, so that kind of, I think if you have fuel sense 2.0 with it, I believe that uh, that helps with the learning. I don't know as much about the bus models as I do the truck models, so I'll, I'll say that. So, yep, so you're starting in second, and whenever you're ready, let you go. Know. And what is your, uh, what's your name, sir, and what do you I'm, do? I'm John, uh, John Scott. I am a senior analyst in global strategic marketing, so uh, my role encompasses everything that's truck oriented for our company uh, on highway and a little bit of off highway so think construction trucks right mixers dumps heavy haul equipment um, those all fall, fall under my purview so what I, I'm tasked with doing is you're going to turn right out of here and then I'm right at the first light what I'm tasked with doing is helping the the business uncover incremental opportunities and in markets in which we currently play to try to gain additional share and volume opportunities but also 
leverage our current product portfolio in market segments globally where we might not have a big play at the moment. So what does that mean to lay person? What that means is I'm, if we already sell a lot of transmissions and school buses in North America, but we only have a, uh, we, you know, 60% of the share, 70% of the share of, of, the, of uh, the school buses sold in North America, what can I do to help the company get more of that annual build? Outstanding. If, if, if we're outside North America and we are in 1% of a given market segment, let's say uh, dump trucks in Europe, we don't, uh, well, let's say that's one of our uh, Jump in the left options. lane, Mike. Which yeah, go ahead and go in the left lane yep. and then we'll pass the, we'll pass the tractor trailer up there. I think we can take them on the line. I, I think, think we can. can. I, uh, we did it last time. <laughs> um, what's this get, what's, what's the engine in this? This is a DD5 four-cylinder engine. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, so 240 horse, 660 pound feet. But I'm also looking at global market trends to help our IR&D team to go and get the far right lane, we're going to turn right at that light. Helping to inform our research and development team on what sort of things they need to keep in mind as they're uh, creating future products, both conventional, diesel, for example, and electric. Um, one thing I didn't note is that this 9-speed gets about 10% better fuel economy than the regular 6-speed. So for a school bus application, that's going to be a, a big benefit um, in terms of lowering your fuel costs. We can go ahead, you can go ahead and, uh, it looks like they're waiting. And how different is a transmission in something like this versus, uh, let's say, a heavy duty pickup truck? So a heavy duty pickup truck, uh, let's, let's use the GM, uh, Silverados and, and Sierras, for example. Um, when Allison was a part of General Motors back in the early 2000s, we produced and created what was then called the A1000. It's now the 1000 series in, in our you know, portfolio. Same product. Uh, but when we were sold off from General Motors, they continued manufacturing that on, our, on their own, but with our, um, our blessing. Uh, we've maintained a professional relationship with them. Let's go ahead and stay in the left part of this lane, and we're going to keep going straight. Keep going straight. You're good. I know it kind of it, it's it's nasty. Watching that guy. Yeah. I got it. Sorry about that. Um, so as we've as we've maintained a professional relationship with General Motors, but we no longer supply to them or any other pickup truck manufacturer. The only exception to that is the new Silverado. 5500 and 6500. Those are built by Navistar in Ohio, and they do have our 1000 and 2000 series products built in Indianapolis. Um, but if you go out today and buy a, uh, a, a Chevy Silverado or a GMC Sierra with an Allison 10 speed, that was developed by, uh, that was led by uh, General Motors. Yes, sir. You're going to take a right. Uh, led by General Motors, but uh, with our blessing. Okay. More or less. I can't speak to the specifics of it. I just don't know. I take it that's why they call it an Allison branded transmission. Yes, uh, because they they understand the value that the Allison brand brings to that uh, customer segment. And uh, I heard that Ram might be uh, trying to understand what the uh, the benefits the Allison brand might bring to their segment. I would hazard a guess that anybody who's trying to compete in the heavy duty pickup truck segment is going to figure out what makes a difference, right? Is it a Cummins engine? Is it an Allison transmission? You know, is it a Duramax? You know, diesel all up while, while that's an internal um, product, but you'll take a right here. Um, but, yep, you got it right there. And you can turn right on red. So, yep. So you're good to go. Yeah, so I know that's a highly, highly competitive segment, but not one in which we play. I mean, we're focused on commercial vehicles. Yeah. And the nine-speed is, is set up for commercial vehicles. Okay. So everything, everything class, uh, really class four and up. So when do you start offering this in the school bus? Um, so we do, I, we do not have I can't I can't speak to which OEMs we're talking to, but this will we're starting production of this in a couple of years. So I would I would 
expect it to be, you know, 2024, 2025 model year. Great guys, by the time we get these goddamn things done, I'll be retired. Well? We're in the grave. No. <laughs> One of the two. Now, well, um, I would, I, well, I would expect it to happen at that time, but the school bus uh, companies are very interested in, in the product because of the greenhouse gas credits they get uh, through the technology that Night Speed offers. So you're going to go straight through here. Um, you're going to go under the bridge, and then we're going to pull back into the parking lot. Um, no, but the, uh, the fuel economy savings and the uh, um, greenhouse gas credits are of interest to the, uh, the OEMs um, in, a, in a general sense, right? And how is it that they uh, they get credits for for that? Then? I can't speak to that so much. That's a complicated topic. I I, I don't know how they calculate it. It's it's uh, dictated by the Department of Energy. I think they have more information on their website, but I, I honestly can't speak to that very well. Okay. So I apologize. So yeah, I'm going to take a right into here, and uh, if you don't mind, hug the doors on the far side. We're going to pull it around. All the way back to where we started. You gotta remember to swift, right? Swing wide. That's right. So, who is your main remanufacturer? You, you don't remanufacture your own transmissions anymore, do you? We do. We call them. We call them retrans. Okay, but it seems like Weller. Yeah, Weller does a lot of that too. He's kicking your butt. Yeah, they are. They're 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 competing with us in that regard. Yeah, quite heavily. I don't know too much about that, but I do know that they are competing against us in that. Well, sir, you we got appreciate the ride. I do. Oh, absolutely. I if you have a short bed truck, you know it's not easy to hook up to a gooseneck. Pop up came out with these extensions from 9 inches to 16 inches to keep you from breaking out your back window when you're pulling a gooseneck trailer. And everybody uses a shore bed. That's the most proper truck there is, is a crew cab shore bed. So, protect that window. Howdy folks. There's been a lot of speculation about the ZF transmission or the Allison transmission for possibly for the next transmission in the Ram trucks. And today we're with, uh, uh, who here with today? Mike Croy. Well, Mr. Croy just happens to have had experience with both the ZF transmission and the Allison transmission. We're going to talk to him today about his experience with both, and who knows, maybe this will help Ram figure out which one they're going to go with. So how are you doing today, sir? Pretty good. So if you could kind of describe to us, what, what would you say the big differences are between the Allison and the ZF transmissions? Well, the, 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 the Allison is like a... It's like a Maytag, an old Maytag washer. It just keeps on going and chugging along. And the only time you ever have any trouble with the Allison transmission is if you abuse it. Otherwise, they'll go on forever. My experience more has been with in the in the bus than than in the truck. The ZF that we had were were in motor coaches, and uh, the, the, some of the biggest problems with, with the ZF, and I think it's still there today, is the uh, the, the service there's there's the service distributors there's there's not uh, they have to go to Chicago to have any type of, of uh, to get the transmission service we had we seemed in the, in the we had them in, in MCI coaches and the, the ZFs we had were uh, we had more trouble trouble with them uh, trying to uh, get the cables adjusted to, Get them so the shift points were were correct, and uh, so and I, I know the ZF probably has changed through the years, and so I, I've not had a lot of newer experience. We just came through, and that's where where I met Dan. We just did a drive with a new Allison transmission, a nine-speed, and it just seems like Allison, you know, is on top of their game. You can get them, you know. Any place you can get them serviced, uh, so they they just seem to be a lot. It's a lot better transmission. It's like night and day. How'd that uh, nine-speed feel compared to what you've had in the past? 
the nine speed is nice. The problem we have with the Allison in the in the school buses is in the 2500 series is we only get four selections, and so if you're running hills, you're depending on what brand you have, you you have different different gear selections. Uh, so it's the the nine speed has got the electronic instead of the manual. It has the, the electronic in it, so you can hold it in any gear, or you can downshift it in any gear that holds in that gear. So they're they're saying that your your fuel economy will increase with the nine speed. Honestly, believe it it probably will because you have more gear selection, so it's not always you know hunting hunting for gears. So it, it it was a very nice unit. So would you say that the problem your your problem with ZF versus Allison is that it's a lack of serviceability across the nation? Yes, it is. Our, it, you know, I'm from the Midwest, so our closest was in Chicago, and that was a good 800 miles away from, from where we were. So. so if you were to discount the, um, the serviceability problems for you in the Midwest, how, what would you say the operation was like between the two? Well, there was, there was problems with the reliability in it. In the, with the ZF transmissions, we had uh, uh, we had more problems with them that we didn't. So mile for mile, the ZFs underperformed compared to the to the Allisons. The Allisons just as as you know when they got away from the old AT545 and they went to the to the 500 and then they changed the uh, in the B500s they went to synthetic uh, uh, fluids. It just took all the, all the problems away that it, that Allison had, and you know it could have too in, in, in the ZFs, but I I don't know that. I like my Allisons up partial too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate your time with us. Now, now, I guess the last question I have: if you could make a recommendation, to, considering that the, the rumor is about Ram, if you could speak direct to Ram as someone who's used both. What would you say to him? What would you? What would your recommendation be? I would use the, I would use the Allison for the simple reason there's more service centers. Um, if 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 uh, the Rams pick it up, there there is going to be a learning curve how to service that transmission, and you have uh, uh, Allison dealers that the networks all over the U.S. So you can get it you can get it serviced, and a lot of the OEMs prefer. If you have a transmission issue, that you go to the OEMs or you go to the to the manufacturer like Allison have it have it have it serviced. So I just think from you know serviceability, stick with an Allison. And I'm not paid by Allison either. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Croy, we appreciate uh, we appreciate your time with us, and that about does it here. Uh, continuing coverage from the Work Truck Show here in Indianapolis. Well, welcome back, folks. I hope you got a lot out of that video, talking about the Allison and the ZF transmission and some of the rumors about RAM.